Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and we're really excited to bring you another great show today. We have Laura Patterson of Vision Edge Marketing with us today. Laura Patterson is the president and author, um, and she's going to talk about what is marketing performance management, why it matters, what metrics the leadership team should expect marketing to use, how to select the right marketing metrics, and key success factors. So let's introduce Laura to the show. Hi, Jeff and everyone. It is such a pleasure to be part of Marketing Made Simple. Thanks for having us. We're glad to have you, Laura. We, we tried this once before, and we had some technical difficulties, so we're really excited to have you back in the show with better quality, and you're looking better than ever, I must say. So, <laughs> it's welcome. It's to be I'll the technology. <laughs> I don't think it's a technology, but it doesn't hurt. So anyway, Laura, I'm going to ask you the question I ask every guest on the show to start off. Who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm Laura Patterson, and I am the co-founder and president of Vision Edge Marketing. And we're a company that focuses on helping our customers improve and prove our marketing effectiveness and the value of marketing for their organization. I think that's that's very well said and nice and succinct. I like that. So I think, you know, with today, there's probably more pressure on marketers than ever before to prove their value. So what are your thoughts about really the business need for people watching this show? If they're a B2B marketer, say, you know, I really need ideas on how I can prove my value to the marketing, to the management team. But you, know, you are exactly right, Jeff. There is a tremendous amount of pressure on marketers to be able to prove their value, to prove that they're making an impact and contributing to the business. And that is not going to go away. I know a lot of people feel like maybe it's a fallout from the current economic environment, but I think that it's going to persist for a very long time to come. And so as a marketer, one of the first key questions we should be asking our leadership team is, what is it that uh, we can do to impact the business and how will you know that we made a difference? Uh, so many marketers really have their metrics down in the weeds, like open rates and click-through rates and followers and fans. Kind of fun stuff to track, easy stuff to track, but doesn't really say a whole lot for how we're moving the business needle. That's a, a really good point about focusing on the things that help move the business needle. So if things like page visits and followers and likes aren't really doing it, what, what are the keys that, that people should really be focused on? I always suggest that for most B2B marketers that they go back and think through the basics. And we really are responsible in marketing for doing three things for the business and doing them superbly. That is acquire customers, keep customers, and grow the value of customers. And so everything we do should in some way or another show how we are uh, driving results in those three areas, how driving those results are adding value in terms of revenue, market share, margin, profit to the business. I really like that, that statement. The, the, the goal of business is to, to acquire customers, keep customers, and grow their value. Very well said. I, I really I like I, that. I can't, take, so, I can't take credit for that. We should give credit where credit is due. And Phil Kotler has been talking about that for a long time. So let's give him credit for that. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Phil. <laughs> But thank you for sharing it with our audience, because I think there's something that, that's there that can help a lot. So let's talk about building a marketing dashboard. Why is it so important, and how do people go about doing uh, it? It is really important, and I, I suspect that many of uh, the viewers think, oh, well, we have a marketing dashboard. We have a CRM system, so we can click a button, and it produces a dashboard. Or we have a marketing automation platform, and we can push a button, and it produces a dashboard. And those are... Um, certainly graphical views of things from those systems, but they're really not a marketing dashboard that the executive team is going to find valuable. So uh, a dashboard for marketing, uh, from a marketing organization that they're going to develop should have three key areas. Uh, a, a, a part of the dashboard that will be consumable by the executive team that actually shows 
how marketing is moving the needle, what value marketing has brought to the table, uh, enables action and strategic decision making. And then another level of the dashboard that shows how well marketing is running as a business, sort of the operational level. And then a third level, which really is down in the weeds, and looks at the functional aspects of marketing and how those functional aspects are performing and meeting their performance targets. So most dashboards today are really down at that, that functional level. And what most marketers need to do today is figure out how to move up and talk more in business terms and show their relevance to the business and, help the, and how they are adding value and most importantly, have something that is actionable. I like that description, Laura, because it really sounds like what you're saying is they need to figure out what questions they need answered before they start looking for a dashboard. That, that too many people put the product first instead of really saying, okay, what are we trying to do here? <laughs> what information does my CEO need to prove that, that marketing is generating sales opportunities and things that really exactly. make a difference? In fact, what Oftentimes, you know, everyone that, all of us that, uh, that go to work, most of us go to work with the idea that we want to make a difference and that we're here to every day to do something for our, for our company. So we really should be asking uh, the question, how, what, we, what is it that we're doing today that is going to move a business needle either today or in the near term? And it's amazing to me how many marketers don't know what business needles they're expected to move. So they're just doing stuff, doing anything they need to do because they want to be productive. I think that's a great point. And one of the, the, the key issues there is if they go and say they inc increase their marketing <laughs> budget by 10%, what happens downstream? You know, and most marketers can't answer that question, right? That's exactly right. And so key questions ought to be, uh, when you're looking at that, at that dashboard, should enable you to ask, answer the question, what is and isn't working and why? And uh, what, should, what decisions do we want to make as a result? What, what things should we do more of? What things should we do less of and why? Those kinds of questions. And so if whatever you're using today doesn't help you make those kinds of decisions, you probably don't have uh, an actionable dashboard. I saw John Miller of Marketo had a great dashboard and it looked at the productivity of marketing channels and the return on investment coming from them. And I really saw how that enables you to refine your marketing mix of taking dollars away from programs that aren't working as well and reinvesting them in things that are working better. And it seems to me that that's a kind of model that, of what it you're is. describing, and am I right? To add on to that, so when you think about marketing or any part of the business, if we go back to Peter Drucker, he said there's two things we need to be looking at, effectiveness and efficiency. And so when you're looking at productivity, you're oftentimes looking at efficiency. And Peter Drucker always said effectiveness first, then efficiency. And the way to think about that is I can learn to run really, really fast and be really good at running, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything if I'm running in the wrong direction. So the very first thing that every marketer needs to do when they're looking at their metrics and building their dashboards is to have clarity around what direction they're running in so they can be effective, focus on effectiveness, and then work towards all the operational efficiencies, which include productivity, uh, in order then to make, uh, continue to make enhancements. So they go hand in hand. Good stuff and very interesting stuff. Now, if somebody's watching this and they say, you know, I really like this and I want to start uh, thinking about what should be in our dashboard, where, do, where would you recommend people start looking? Are there books or there white papers? You know, what do you recommend? And I'm sure you've got some good content that, yes, in that fact, you could share, Yes, we have white right? papers on marketing operations, which includes information about dashboards and on alignment and accountability on our website at visionedgemarketing.com. Here's the things to think about when you're building that dashboard. First, you want to make sure it's, it's relevant, that the metrics you're choosing give insight into what is and isn't working. And you want to think about the category. Remember what we said, find, it, our job is to acquire, keep and grow. So you ought to have some metrics uh, on your dashboard, key performance indicators, that talk about 
customers. What kinds of, you know, how many more customers did you contribute to the business and help acquire? What was that cost and how fast did you do it? Retention, how many customers did you help retain? What did that do to cost to serve or share of wallet? Uh, what did this do in terms of advocacy or loyalty? Uh, you want something around the competition because most of us have that. So you want to have a, some kind of metrics related to where you are, perhaps your rate of growth in your category compared to your competition or the product adoption rate uh, for your product compared to the competition. You want something around products because most of us sell a product or a service. So our innovation or, or something related again to uh, the diffusion of our products in the marketplace. Um, you want something obviously around the money, right? We have to show our value for the money. So, you know, there was always that question, show me the money. So we have to have something around the money. Uh, so those are some basic categories, customers, customer value, competition, product, and of course the money. Good stuff, Laura. Now, one of the things which you, you, I know you're working on right now that I would like to talk about, that I would like to, is the survey you're doing um, on it. And let me, let me bring this up so that you can talk about it. Thank you. Thank, Go thank ahead, you. Laura. So, um, yeah. Last year was the 10th annual year that we ran this survey. We've been asking for 10 years. Uh, marketers and uh, their leadership team to talk about marketing metrics, data, analytics, processes, all different things. And in fact, as a result of that data, we can actually predict which marketers are going to receive what kind of a grade from their leadership team for their ability to have impact on the business. There is a very, very high correlation between certain metrics and alignment and this grade. So uh, this year we launched the survey again. We're very honored to have ITSMA as a partner on the survey. And we're looking for people to once again provide insight into how they are measuring marketing, the data and analytics they're using, their processes and skills. And the cool thing about this survey is it's a great benchmarking opportunity. We're always looking for ways in marketing to see how we stack up. And here is a, a way for you to very cost effectively do some benchmarking uh, in the B2B space uh, related to this capability. Laura, well, right, very interesting. And when we post the show, we'll also post a link to the survey. So people can just click the link directly in the survey. I, I mean, when they watch the show. So this has been a great discussion. I've really enjoyed talking with you. Now, as we wrap up the show, can you give us a, a, a takeaway from this? What is the one thing that you want people to remember about marketing dashboards? So to answer your question, the one thing yes. away, I think to your very first comment, the pressure on marketing to demonstrate and prove its value is not going away. So you have to have a dashboard. Don't get sucked into thinking that you have to go buy some software right away. The very first thing is to figure out how are you going to build the right alignment so you can select the right metrics that you will be able to use to show your contribution, your impact, and your value. And to keep those metrics as much as possible around marketing's role associated to uh, find, keep, and grow. Thanks, Laura. Very good uh, insight and takeaway from this. Last question. How do people learn more about Vision Edge Marketing and Laura Patterson? Where can they go? Well, we always invite them to come to our website at visionedgemarketing.com. We have a wonderful resources there, articles, uh, recordings, and white papers uh, that are all available, uh, complimentary, for any marketer who's looking to hone their skills. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It is a pleasure. I want to thank Laura for appearing on the show today. She's been a wonderful guest and uh, really appreciated her on the show. Just a reminder that new shows post every Thursday at noon Eastern time. So join us each and every Thursday to meet great guests like Laura Patterson. This is Jeff Ogden of Marketing Made Simple TV, and we'll see you next week. Jeff, thank you.